Okay, so this is part two of 5-4, the binomial theorem. And this lesson is going to cover the same material we covered yesterday, but instead of using Pascal's triangle, we're going to use what we call the binomial theorem to expand a binomial. So the binomial theorem, again, is a way to expand a binom binomial without using Pascal's triangle. And the first thing we have to understand is about factorial. So if you've never seen the idea of a factorial before, it's the exclamation point in math. And what it represents, if you have a number with an exclamation point after it, it means that number times every number less than it down to 1. So every whole number less than it down to 1. So 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we're going to evaluate this problem. 8 factorial would be 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And on the bottom we have 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1, and that's being multiplied by 5 factorial. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And we want to simplify and find this solution. So what I hope you're seeing right now is that we have some factors that can simplify. If we have the same number or the same number is equivalent to 1, so this becomes a 1, this becomes a 1, this becomes a 1, this becomes a 1, and this becomes a 1. And then if we look here, we can simplify even further because 3 times 2 is 6. So we can cancel those out and this 6 and this 6 become 1 as well. So then we're left with 8 times 7 on the top, which is 56, times 1 times 1 times 1, which is still 56. So when we do these factorials in this lesson, they should simplify nicely for you. So looking at the next one, we have 6 factorial. So 6 times 5 times, and then if you think about it, after the 6 times 5, it's 4, 3, 2, 1. If we look in the bottom, we have 4 factorial, which is 4, 3, 2, 1. So if you can see this right away, this is going to cancel, and we don't need the rest of this. If you need to write it out, you can, but you really, if you think about it, 6 times 5 times 4, 3, 2, 1 is the same as 4, 3, 2, 1 here, so those will cancel. And then on the bottom, we just have 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1. And then we can simplify that. The 6 and the 2 is 3 and 1, and 3 times 5 is 15 over 1. If you need to do this all out, again, you can expand it all out like we did on the first one so you can see it, and you can multiply all out and simplify it that way. So the binomial theorem states, and it kind of looks like a crazy situation, but basically we're going to focus on this part right here. And we're going to identify an n which is going to be the exponent on the binomial. And we're going to identify our k. And k is the term we want a minus 1. So if we're looking for the fifth term, the k is 5 minus 1. If we're looking for the third term, it would be 3 minus 1. Because we always start with the term b, this term starts at 0. So if we're looking for this term to be 4, it's really the fifth term. So we have to do the term we want minus 1. So this first problem says find the fifth term. So the term we want is number 5, is 5. So we take 5 and minus 1, k equals 4. And then we have n equals 7. A. a and B in this particular problem are A and B, but A and B normally are whatever these values are. Okay, So those are always A is the first term, B is the second. And you take the sign goes with B. Okay, So then we follow this pattern. It says to take N factorial, so that's 7 factorial, over K factorial, which would be 4 factorial, times n minus k. So n is 7, k is 4, so it would be 3 factorial. And then it takes a to the n minus k, which is 3, times b to the k, which is 4. These two terms here are always going to be those numbers in reverse. So the 4 goes last, the 3 goes first. Okay? And then you're going to simplify this. So we just learned in the previous problems, this is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4, 3, 2, 1, which will cancel with this 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay? And then on the bottom, we have 3 times 2 times 1, because we have the 3 factorial. And if we simplify, the 3 times 2 is 6, so that can cancel with that 6. And we have 7 times 5 is 35, and then 1 on the bottom will just be 1. And then we have a to the 3rd, b to the 4th. 
So instead of doing Pascal's triangle, expanding this whole thing out to find the fifth term, this gives us directly what the fifth term would be. So binomial theorem is really helpful when you want to find a specific term. Okay? You can do Pascal's and work your way through Pascal's triangle and count it out, but this will get you right to that term number. So let's look at another example. So now it says find the sixth term. So sixth term means we want 6 minus 1, k equals 5. And n is 9 because it's x plus y to the 9th. So again, it's nine, n factorial over k factorial, which is 5. And then n minus 5 is 4. And then we take our first term, which is x, and we put it to the k, which is 4. And then our second term, y, goes to the n minus k, which was, oops, sorry, k is, no, this is n minus k, that's the 4, and this is a 5. So again, the 5 goes on the second, the 4 goes on the first. And if we simplify that, 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, the 5 all the way down is going to cancel with this 5 here, and then we have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, because that's the 4 factorial. Okay, and if we simplify that, I look around and say, oh, what can I multiply together? So I say 3 times 2 is 6 again. You can cancel that. The 4 will go into the 8, so we can simplify. 8 divided by 4 is 2, so we get 2 on the top. Again, if you just want to multiply these out and do it that way, you can. So then 9 times 2 times 7 is 126, and then we have our x to the 4th, y to the 5th. So example 7 is similar. It says find the coefficient of the x to the 7th, y to the 2nd term. Okay, so that's the term we're looking for. So if we think about this is what we have, x to the 7th and y to the 2nd, then the second number here, just like up here, the second number in our formula is always the k. So we want k to be 2. Okay, the second number is always the k. If we look back at our binomial formula, the exponent on the second term is k. So we know k is 2. We know n is 9. So we're going to have 9 factorial over 2 factorial, and then 9 minus 2 is 7 factorial. We're going to take the 4x and raise it to the 7th power, because remember these always switch, and the negative 3y is going to raise to the 2nd power. And you can see the x7, the y2 match with what we were looking for. So it asks for the coefficient. The coefficient is the number. So we have to simplify this to get the number. So 9 factorial is 9 times 8 times 7, which will cancel with this. And on the bottom, we have 2 times 1. And if we simplify that, that's 72 divided by 2 is 36. So that's the coefficient there. Then we have to do 4x to the 7th and 4x to the 7th is, sorry, I'm just trying to find the number, 16384x to the 7th, and then negative 3y to the 2nd is 9y squared. It only asks for the coefficient, so we really only need the numbers. If we multiply 36 times 16384 times 9, we get 5,308,416. So that would be the coefficient on the x7y squared term for this problem. So then doing the same thing on example 8, we're looking at k is 5 and n is 8. So we're going to do 8 factorial over 5 factorial. 8 minus 5 is 3 factorial. And then we're going to take our first term, 2x, and raise it to the third. And our second term, negative 3y, is going to the fifth. Always make sure you switch the order. So 5, 3, 3, 5. Then we're simplifying. 8 times 7 times 6. And then the 5 down where we'll cancel this 5. And then we have 3 times 2 times 1. Again, 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. So we can cancel that. We get 56. This term is 2 to the 3rd is 8x to the 3rd. And negative 3 to the 5th is negative 243 y to the fifth. If we multiply just the numbers, because it asks for the coefficients, oops, I, 
Yeah, so if we multiply just the numbers, 56 times 8 times 243. Sorry, I grabbed my calculator. 56 times 56 times 8 times 243, we get negative 108864. Again, it only asks for the coefficient, so we don't need to worry about the variables. So that's how we do find specific terms or find specific coefficients of terms for a specific binomial. The binomial experiment means that problems can be solved using binomial expansion if the experiment consists of n trials that are all the same. Each trial is one, this should say one of two outcomes. There's only two outcomes that can happen. So if you fly up a coin, heads, tails, if you win or lose, if you are a left or right-handed person, something like that, there's only two possibilities. And then the trials are independent of each other, which means what happens in one trial doesn't affect the next. So this problem says the probability that Andre gets a hit when at bat is one out of five. So a hit is one out of five, which means a not hit, not getting a hit is four out of five. Okay. We want to know the probability that Andre gets four hits during 10 at bats. So 10 at bats is the total. So we're going to do 10 factorial. What we want is four hits. So that part's going to become the, sorry, the, the, that's going to be the 1 at over 5, right? Because that's hits. So we want 4 of those. And the 4 out of 5, we want 6 of. So 4 hits, 6 not hits. And then if we just set that up over here, 6 factorial, 4 factorial. Right? So this is how we're going to get the probability. So we solve this. We get 10 times eight, nine times eight times seven, and then be six, five, four. So we're gonna cancel with the six and we get four times three times two times one. And then one fifth to the fourth power is one over 625. And four fifths would, to the sixth power is 4,096 over 15, 625. So I just took those and raised them to the power. If we simplify this, I would go with four times two is eight. And then the 9 simplifies with the 3, and we get 10 times 3 times 7 is 210. If we multiply that by these, we end up with 860160 over 9765625, which is 0 0.088 or 8.8%. So he has an 8.8% chance that he gets 4 hits during his 10 at-bats if his batting average is one out of five. So then the last part is, how can we use binomial theorem to actually expand a binomial? And I am going to change this problem to five so we have less work to do. So it, you, on your paper, just cross it out and make it a five. All right. So using this idea to expand a binomial, the first term in a binomial expansion, again, what the 5 is always going to be n. The first term is going to be y to the 0, right? It starts with x to the 5th, y to the 0. So we're going to have 0 factorial, and then we're going to have 5 factorial. And then the next term, again, which always n is the same, the x is going to be to the fourth, the y is going to be the first, so it's one factorial, four factorial. And if we continue this pattern, we get five factorial, and then the one goes to two factorial, three, and then x to the third, y to the second. And then we have five factorial over three factorial, two factorial, x to the second, y to the third, and then 5 factorial over 4 factorial, 1 factorial, x to the 1st, y to the 4th. And the last one would be 5 factorial over 5 factorial, 0 factorial, x is gone, y is to the 5th. So this is the same idea as if we did our expansion with Pascal's, except for now we're solving it using binomial theorem. Typically, I find students prefer Pascal's, but if you like this way be better, then you can. 
So this five over five is gonna cancel and we're just gonna get X to the fifth for the first one. And then the next one, the five is times four, three, two, one, we'll cancel with the four. So we just get five X to the fourth Y. And then the next one, we get five times four and then three, two, one, we'll cancel with the three. The two will simplify with the four. So we get five times two is 10 X to the third Y to the second. The next one, if you notice, is five over two and three, just like this one was. So you're gonna get 10 again, x to the second, y to the third, because that's symmetry, which leads to five again, x, y to the fourth, which leads to one, y to the fifth. So once you figure out the first half, your symmetry will allow you to get the numbers for the second half. Um, not on every problem, only when the, there's no numerical values. If the coefficients are one, then you'll see that pattern. If the coefficients are not one or they're not the same, you will not see that happen. So let's look at the next problem. So now we've got this problem, okay? So we're gonna start with our four factorial because N is four, and we always start with zero factorial, four factorial. And then we're going to have our five A is to the fourth and our negative four B is to the zero. Then we go to the next term, it's gonna go four factorial, zero goes up by one and four goes down by one. And then we have the five A to the third and the negative four B to the first. The next term would be four factorial over, one goes up to two, three goes down to two. We have five A to the second negative four B to the second. And then we're gonna go four factorial, the two goes up to three, the two goes down to one, five fact to the first, and negative four B to the third. And then my last one, I'm gonna sneak down here, four factorial over, four factorial, zero factorial, the five A is gone. Sorry, and the negative four B is to the fourth. And now we're gonna simplify each of these. So four factorial of four factorial makes one. Five A to the fourth is the same as 625 A to the fourth. And negative four B to the zero, anything to the zero is just one. So then that this whole term is done. Go to the next term. Four factorial times three, two, one would cancel. So we get four times 5a to the third is 125a to the third, and negative 4b to the first is negative 4b. Sorry, I forgot my four. Negative 4b. And then the next term, four factorial times three factorial, or three, four times three, the two will cancel. And then we can simplify the two here, two and four. So we get six times 25a squared times 16b squared. That takes care of this one. We know four, three we did over here, so that gives me four times 5a to the first times negative 64b to the third. And then the last one's right here, which is going to be one times negative four to the fourth is positive 256 B to the fourth. So we simplify each of these. Now we're gonna do our final round six simplification. So 625 B to, or A to the fourth. Plus, if I multiply all of this together, I get, oh, sorry, I shouldn't say plus yet because it's negative. So negative 2000 a to the third B, and if I multiply all this together, I get positive 2,400 A squared B squared. If I multiply all of this together, I get negative 1,280 A B to the third, and then if I multiply this together, I get 256 B to the fourth. And that is the binomial expansion instead of using Pascal's, that is expanding using the binomial theorem. So with the binomial theorem, your denominators go starting at zero, the first number goes up by one, the second goes down by one, and then your exponents, the first one goes, starts at the highest number and goes down, just like the pattern we talked about.